Oh, damn it. I'm muted again. I hate this shit. Oh, yeah. Hang on until we get everybody here, huh? I'm already live. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Well, hi. didn't it sort of sort of kind of i liked it i just putting stuff together that i had on file well welcome 2017 i'm in missouri we're getting iced under big ice storm hit it our way Ugh. but it's gonna be a great year i'm in louisiana 76 degrees Debating on wearing shorts out tonight. Rob, let's hear it. What's your weather like? Rob is silent. Hell, Rob might not even be here. No, he's there. He's just very low. My uh, Rob, your mic is low. You can hear him? Ah, uh, now I hear you. Nope, I think that's James here. Hey, James, how's it going? What's your weather like? Hey, it is, um, I think it's about 12 degrees. Let's see. Uh, minus that's... 11. Mm, minus 11 degrees Celsius. There in Alberta? Yep. Yeah. I hear you, Rob. Are you not hearing Rob, Josh? I don't hear. Uh-uh. What in the heck? All right, I think we need to restart it then. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because we're hearing him. Hey, guys, you hear me? Guys, yeah, I hear you fine. I, I got a job for us, a first job. I got it. We're Probably live. Work. Yeah, we are live, James. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, wow, I got a job. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah. Okay, there you are, Rob. What about now? Now I hear you. <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing here, James? Um, I came because there's a, there's this one Australian guy that really he gets off his game when I'm around, so I thought I'd show up today. <laughs> so I can make sure he wasn't so slick because he's got that big camera advantage now, you know. <laughs> Fuck me, I gotta do something. <clears throat> I was taking um, shots of the moon last night, and it was all yellow. And I had it coming just up over the horizon. I can't it's, get those star shots. It won't. I don't. Know, I don't know what settings I've got to use to get the star shots because it won't. I just can't. Adam seems to be able to just uh, focus in on them, and, they, and he just takes them. I can't. Mine goes all. It, it, I'm not letting too much light, and it just won't work. So, I, I check remember out that article. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, James. Yeah, I remember reading the manual for yours, and and it is apparently quite. Cool complicated to set the exposure for that but there's a there's a guide for it so yeah, i've tried to read it <clears throat> remember i'm a newbie newbie so I'm just, yeah it's really all about the thing. iso and the, how fast your shutter speed is you know i changed it, the iso to three two and um that didn't make any uh slicker difference so I'll, 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 just, I'll just go back to the i'll just go back to the shop again yeah let them set, set it up because um, what what I saw last night was Sirius. I um, focused in on Sirius and um, it was twinkling, dude. And it was it was so it was very very similar to um, to Venus when I focused in on that one. But but the only difference was it was um, it was flickering and um, changing sort of color. And when I first focused in on it, I reckon it was um, colorful as well. It had if did it colors in it. Mm. like reddish hey, yeah colors. reddish and greens and all sorts of stuff in it. do you know great. that do you know that the um elite people well you you, you, <laughs> you hear us say them and they <laughs> but the people that are in control actually worship that star there's something to that star that you're filming there you know have you ever mm. heard of that before no yeah yeah you, serious yeah the, the dog star yeah <clears throat> 
So try Josh, setting your ISO at about 800 and try your shutter speed at about 1 over 60 or so. That's what okay. I do on my phone, and it works on okay. a cell phone pretty quick. Yep. And the other thing with this camera, too, is I'm finding that um, the battery life isn't very long at all. I tried to download my photos from last night just then, and um, the, the camera didn't want to know anything about it. And, all really? has done this before. All, all I do is go and recharge it, and then bang, she works. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, I've heard how bad problem. If you sh can you charge it and then transfer someone else, yep. and be very careful with the power cord too. They said they're quite unique. Mm. Yep. Cool. Uh, enough of that, Josh. How you had an that you were going to um, start up today. Yeah, I actually, while we were waiting for John to see if he could show up and get his battle dress ready, I wanted to talk about Iron Realm Media. I wanted to talk about kind of how it is we came to be. Um, not individually necessarily, but as a group. Some of the stuff we had to get to where we where we gotten and where we go in the future. Well, this will be a six-hour show. Well, this will be, yeah, at least. <laughs> no. <laughs> Josh, that's a great, great question. Uh, we've each, uh, each got our own little story to that, I think. Well, I didn't really want to get too much into the individual stories. Um, just get too in-depth here. We'd save that. Yeah, that'd be a, no that'll be a 25-hour show, right? <laughs> we kind of have to keep that out week by week and do one at a time. I think it'd be the best way to do that. Yes, sir. Um, so I guess maybe just if you could do a real quick brief overview on how you woke up, I guess, maybe everything that happened right before Iron Realm Media started to form. Whoever was first. We could take this order in the order of uh, chronology which would put me dead last because I'm the newbie. <coughs> yep. Well, I know we all were out on Twitter doing our thing. That's kind of how we found each other. We just all took notice of each other's work, if you will, on Twitter and kind of started talking to each other in direct messaging and slowly but surely kind of grouped together. But as far as a chronology i really don't remember how far back this thing's been going anymore i mean rob and james and john and i have been hanging tough with this for how long guys going on a year and a half oh. two years well i don't I see i'd have to say i mean i rem the first person i remember actually seeing was john's account and then yeah we just started getting into each other's circles kind of retweet and look at it stuff and then I, the beauty, what I would like to remember is, I think it was Josh who got us on the Hangouts. That's when things really, I mean, when we started connecting as individuals and learning a little bit more about who we are and where we are and what we do, was really when we started saying, ah, shit. Let's well, have that a has to this. go to Josh for sure. He came in here and got all us old Twitter heads onto this whole new platform here, and we started actually getting to know each other as real people. So, yeah, that's Josh, all yeah, Josh. Josh actually, Josh followed me. And he said something about his radio show. So I went and listened to his radio show. And as soon as I heard that, I knew he'd be a, um, a good little addition. That's why Josh is there, I'd say. Yep. Um, having radio experience, I think he'd be great for the, for the podcast. That's what we were planning at that stage. But I, I, we all got together because of Ish. It's as simple as that. Yeah, Yish, pretty much. Yish I was going to say that. Yeah, Yish made a room, and we all got together. So thanks, Yish. Now you're, you're a turncoat. Yes, Yish is more true. Yes, but, but um, on uh, Twitter, who claims to be a baller yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the retweets. It. Thanks for the retweets last night too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that isn't isn't that the irony of it? But it just lends you to say, I mean, yeah, <coughs> he might have stuck us in the first room. 
but we also carried through the tradition of having rooms and we always maintained our group. Well, if I remember correctly, he got us started in that room and then he disappeared and it was pretty much us guys, us four. And remember Donald Stott, he was doing the graphics work. I still have those graphics saved. Uh, There was a lot of other guys that were in that first group Mm -hmm. doing the work. He may have got it together, but he disappeared and then came back allegedly because he had been sick. I'm sure he was working one of his other accounts at that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Either way, uh, we got to tip the nod to that. It's funny how the the things work, eh? Yeah. The worst ends up starting something because of their arrogance. Anyways. You could make him an unofficial member of Iron Room Team. Right? The Hall of Shame. Our founder. (laughs) He's definitely the <laughs> brass bust in the lobby and the whole nine yards. Yeah. Well, he keeps on talking about wanting to debate people and this and that, but he um, won't uh, accept our challenges. Will he? he will not come on our show, no, sir. Well, I mean, un- unless, to be fair, he will come on, I heard, but only if it's moderated by someone, not us, and only if it's pre canned questions with pre canned answers. So that's kind of like, that's not kind of like MSM. <laughs> y- yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. it's funny how he wants that format for his debate, but he has to go get his little wolf pack to come gang up on us all on Twitter when we're all trying to get some stuff out to people that might be trying to wake up. Mm. I've yeah. blocked them all. Well, I've blocked them all. Yeah, uh, I don't block anybody. I'll take them to the end, man. I sit <laughs> there and tweet those dudes and get fifteen new followers. I'm fine with it. Ah, uh, that's followers. one of my flat Earth perks. Yep. I would like to say thank you because this has been a really big deal for me in the past year. I mean, it's been so time consuming trying to get this together, but it was, I guess probably in February when I started going on the local radio station here in St. Louis. So probably by the end of the month, I decided to get a Twitter account to connect with the listeners there. And I guess that's when you guys saw me and I was invited to mm-hmm. join this guys on twitter to do a podcast yeah damn that was back in february damn near a full year ago jeez we got to give a, a hats off to mike a ptsd artist and hacksaw all the guys that yes you know, had a real big cow yeah. cow for Cal's our man. oh that's our man i wish he was here yeah no he's studying but no we got to thank everybody there's there has been a lot there's a people. list we need to make that list for a future show or at least have it somewhere on the site mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Where I've is, got it um, all documented here and there. Where's our uh, feature? Where's the feature? Is he getting the bus ready still? That's what I heard. Okay. Yes, he's rebuilding the bunker. Oh, man. I- I'm actually, for the record as well, um, rebuilding my porch as a studio. So it's going to be a great place to work and uh, do the radio show for IRM and the Fringe. It's going to be awesome. In other words, you've been kicked out, James. Just say it how it is, mate. Well, <laughs> dude, do you know how many activities I could do out here? So many activities. <laughs> is that a yes, Rob? Don't wanna, we don't want to hear about you, buddy. Your neighbors will dob you in for it if you do that, eh? Uh, I'm going to soundproof this baby so I can cuss at you all the way from Canada. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm. So, yeah. All right, so did everyone understand John's um, video? Because it is uh, quite hard to understand um, what what he was trying to achieve. So, yeah, is everyone up to – they know ex- what he was trying to achieve? I think so. With mm. the table turned, I think. I don't, well, he, don't had the know. 20, he had the 24-hour clock. It would be good if he comes on very, very shortly. But he had the 24-hour clock that, that, that will do one revolution under the, under the gyroscope. And he was, trying to, he was saying to all the people that bagged him out on his last video that mm. the, the bearings and friction and everything would be too sensitive and it would turn. So that just shows that the gyro was staying still, but the, but the the main part of the gyro was still was turning with the clock, but, but the other part was staying absolutely dead still, which shows that it wasn't moving at all with, under the clock either. So this so was, was a that, that, debunk. Yeah, it was, a, it was a bit of a reaction to all the criticism that he was getting for the first one because, you know, everyone was saying that, you know, there'd be friction that would 
would um, would uh, not allow that thing to turn or t- however mm. he's bloody yeah. So I, know, I, um, I had a good I had a good think about it. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, I think I got it because in his first video he showed that the gyroscope was still was stayed level and nothing was yeah. moving. And and they were saying that's from the bearings and everything was keeping it from moving. That if it were a really more sensitive gyroscope without these bearings, that it would move and it and would the, show them. And John and says the motor, no, it would. the motor as well. He's got the motor attached to it. You know, that's um, when he spins it up, he's got that motor turning it full time. That, mm. that would um, have, that would cause it a problem. But obviously, that didn't either. But he's still getting bagged out for this. He goes, no, Matt, no, if you don't understand the gyros, if you don't understand how they work, which most people don't because they just mm. think gravity, they think gravity pulls them to the earth no matter what position they're in. They're always going to pull. And if you can't get that out of their heads, then they won't understand. It, it's as simple as that. And it's, it's really, really frustrating because, you know, I talk to a lot of people about it. And, mm. They they don't get it. They don't, you got, they don't understand that that gyro should. You got to know when to fold them. The yep. No mm. one to hold them and no one to fold them with the globers. Otherwise, you mm. you run the risk of running yourself out. But, but um, James, you got to rem- you got to remember you got to mm. remember that they, these you know if they're fifty years old, they've been thinking that's a globe for fifty years, and mm. and there's no way in hell that they're thinking it's flat. There's no way in hell. No, I know. I and, have it. And and they and all they think is. Why is it not moving? Because it's not, it's a ball, but why isn't that moving? So they're, yeah. they're coming for other never, excuses. So yeah, you can't blame them for that, John. Yeah, you, know, you can't blame no. them for that. You know, you know, mm. it's just that we've going back to where we all started. Mm. We needed that kick along with other other um, untruths. With, with, yeah, with, with, yeah, that's right. We we needed mm. that, and you, we you couldn't start. It'd be very very difficult to start with flat Earth. It'd be very very difficult. Well, maybe that's where I'm going wrong. Because like even my own dad, right? I, I can't remember the exact argument, but it was a one time deal. Like he's like, son, James, I've flown I've flown in a Concorde. I've seen the horizon where the space meets the sky. Like you're you're wrong. But it's he won't even talk about it because he's actually went up there and I'm and, I, and my first thing was like, oh yeah, but you saw it through a tiny Concord window and what exactly did you see, you know? But it was just it's the it's just even the experience because you probably heard from the pilots that at you know sixty thousand feet you're so close and you can see the shape uh, or the curve like that's that's never gonna break no matter what I do and I'm his son so yeah. I just have to let it go. I, I think I have to approach it with uh, something else first. Maybe 9-11 is the one. That's oh. a tough one, too, though. I have a friend of 20 years that has always been very deep, checking out some behind-the-scenes things, not necessarily quite a conspiracy realist like we all are, but definitely questioning some stuff. And he still refuses to think there's even any possibility that his own government would somehow be involved in 9-11. So that one's a tough one, too. I mean, there's just, it, it's the person. It just depends on what their level of yes. cognitive dissonance is going to be, uh, what they'll accept and look past, or what they're going to be just completely stamping their feet, dragging their feet, refusing to even consider as a possibility. Well, there's only two people that I talk to. Really, that and you know they talk back, and we actually talk conspiracies, and that's my manager, mm. and the other ones, uh, the cleaner that comes in all the time, and uh, both of them, I was talking conspiracies with both of them before this come up. Mm. One of um, the manager, he's a sort of a Clementine. You heard of Clementine? Yep, the, yep, yep. He he loves that, and he loves the. Uh, Egyptian, um, the pyramids and the, and all, all that sort of stuff. That's what that's what he loves. So he, his mind is sort of already moved over. So he will actually sit down and listen to things that I've got to say. He can't get the gyros, but mind you, <laughs> but, but if you if you get a newbie and you want to start with this stuff, it's nearly impossible. Nearly impossible. I'm thinking. And I can't blame him for that. You can't blame him for that either. 
What's the most obvious, obvious, like, historical? I don't know. We went through this before, but because the, the age group right now with boomers and that age, they're also nuts into space. And they'll, it's really hard to get somebody over 46 right now to believe that it's faked, I'd say. Because they're so, it's so ingrained. Right. Space is cool, man. You got to stay yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, and they, well you're, you're about 70, aren't you? you you've, you've I'm 75 this weekend, sir. 75. <laughs> <laughs> Fucker. Yep. <laughs> No, oh, it's about time to take your uh, retirement trip to the ring of Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm heading out. You'll hear it next year. Wall died. Yeah. Oh, later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, strange days. May hey. 25th? Is that when it is? <laughs> oh, May 28th. That's when it is. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, definitely... Uh, yeah, we need to find. It's hard to just jump off onto flat Earth. I, yeah. Everyone I've talked to in real life about it has been people that I already knew were really deep into conspiracy ideas and were willing to look at some outside things. And some of those people have actually come pretty far with it. Some refuse to even look at it, and some have literally not spoken to me since about hmm. a year and a half ago now. Well. Maybe, and a big shout out to uh, our friend and someone who comes on the show regularly, Richard Calberg, author of The Narrow Gate, I believe, at WordPress. Um, yes, sir. Maybe I should just send my blog to, to my, his blog over to my dad and say, hey, start at the first thing. You know anything about sound? Start with sound. You might learn something. Oh, yeah, I'll try that. My dad is just that stubborn. He might just want to read about mechanical engineering and energy stuff first. So I'll try that. Everyone has a hook. You just have to find it. Mm. I've been watching a few 9-11 videos lately just to get some giggles, just to sort of recap on a few things. There's a couple of new videos out there, but um, <clears throat> I watched one yesterday about um, – uh, it's in my timeline if you want to go back in there. It's about um, the – cameras there was a there was a camera crew taking photos of the world trade center and what they did they hired people to get onto the 91st floor and the 91st floor was cleared out does everyone know the story already not at all no okay. sir no nope. <clears throat> so they what they did they um and then they so they got all these you know 20 30 people they hired them just for five minutes and they took a photo of them from a helicopter them sort of pressed up against the glass in a window and it dead set looked like one of those jumper jumper photos um really that's wild yeah and yeah so they took maybe 20 30 photos maybe more well probably yeah. more because they would have took photos of each person lots and lots and lots of them trying to get good shots but that's what they look like when they finished they look like jumper photos they look like the people who wow. were trapped in there that, that's exactly what it looked like that's what this bloke was getting at who made the video too but, but that's what it looked like and um, so on the 91st floor I'm pretty sure that's I think the plane hit just above that I think in that first tower so but they all look once, once you've zoomed in they all, all those all those floors look the same, don't they? You, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to recognise one floor to the next if you were zoomed right in. But yeah, I thought that was very very interesting. It is, and I I actually um I'm I'm not going to do what we always do struggle to search for it. But I found something interesting nine eleven myself this week, and maybe it's just new to me, and maybe you've heard of it. But um, so in tarot cards, there's a card called the Tower. And and if you look at the look at the card, it's actually a recreation almost of the like it's the lightning bolt hitting the tower and cracking it in half, and then it's got the people falling out of the burning tower, and then it's got a there's one picture I swear you know that one picture of the jumper who looks like it's in a he's in a straitjacket with his leg. Mm -hmm. He's if you put the card of the hangman beside him. You can see it's just a recreation of an old um, occultic uh, tarot card uh, based around the tower. And uh, that was new to me. So it's always good to learn new things. I was like, no way. Come on. That's crazy. 
yeah, I, I have the picture. I'll uh, I'll put it up in a second, but it's uh, it's quite interesting. But yeah, yeah, going back to where we started, that's what you know, that's what started me off. Yeah, you know, when I saw Building Seven. So once you, once you once you see that, once you see Building Seven fall over, if you if if you're a any sort of mentally competent person and you see that building falling down, you know that wasn't normal falling down building footage. And if you so if you're asleep after that, then you've got a problem. Go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. Yes, sir. Yeah. Building seven is pretty much the, you know, smoking gun for the whole thing to me, especially the way they announced it had already fallen on live TV and it's standing in the distance behind her in the shot. You know, you've seen that footage. At the asbestos in the building well, That was like a. Oh, yeah. Um, I watched uh, Dr. Judy Wood do a presentation the other day and she um, said that that was, that was bullshit, the asbestos part of it. Um, they, they built the first building, 40% of the first building. Um, I think it was about 1971 when they realized asbestos was no good. So they ripped all the asbestos out of that first one and then built the rest of the two buildings with no asbestos. That's what she I just sent a picture of my new find on 9-11 this year, which is, or actually late last year, which is the fact that those middle floors had absolutely nothing in them. If you look at the picture there, uh, Josh, and share it with everybody, the fact those yeah. middle floors were completely empty just blew my mind, especially when there's that theory out there that all the towers and all the radio towers and all the pylons for the electric lines are all gathering energy per free energy and Tesla and that kind of thing. Mm. Well, it was definitely basically the buildings were built to be destroyed in their big sacrifice on 9-11 ritual. Another interesting thing, I don't know how many cities wound up with these, but in Lafayette, where I visit quite often here in Louisiana, there is a monument that is made of some of the pieces of the actual metal from inside 9-11 from uh, World Trade Center when it happened. And Mm. I'm, from what I understood, those got sent around to cities around the country, which is really morbid and bizarre to me. Other than all the rest that got shipped off and destroyed in China, melted down instead of being examined forensically like it should have been. Well, let, let me say this. Think about it. Because I just learned something uh, on a conversation we were having the other night. Sorry, Ted. Um, wouldn't it make sense if it was a big ritual and it was a big um, uh, event that had all kinds of objects used for the spell that you would want to take pieces of the remains of that spell and spread them around to give power to all the rest of the places? Maybe so. Never thought about that one. Interestingly enough, Lafayette was nominated as one of the happiest cities in America not too long ago, which to me just means it's full of sheep. You're taking your happy pills down there. Because if you're happy in this world right now, looking around and not just running in loud screams trying to wake people up, it's you're you're definitely asleep. Rob, Rob, check out those pictures. I uh, I, I sent them, Josh. You can put them up for us if you can. Just another thing that you know. That's what I love about this. You you think you uh, know everything, and then another week or another day. With uh, each day as you uh, are awakening, as our famous Josh put it, we're not woke, we're always awakening. But uh, the more and more you awaken, the more you look at stuff, you learn more. It's amazing. I didn't think I could learn more, but yet here we are learning more. Yes. You know, you'll yes. see these pictures here. There's the, there's just the tower. Yeah. You're muted. Oh, and then you got the other one of the see the air. That's the one. Interesting, yep. eh? Yeah, it's crazy stuff. Yeah. All those tarot cards. All those tarot cards. That, I'm not sure what game that is. So, but there's a lot of the um, 
No, those are the original, original like old. Oh yeah, tarot cards, cards and Illuminati game are two different things, <laughs> for yeah, sure. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's what I meant. What um, there's a lot of uh, similarities in there in those um, Illuminati games. Well, it's all a game. It's all a game they've been playing for a long time, and we're just pieces in their game. That's what people need to understand. Or they're recreating their their events, right? And by by their cards, they're recreating what they believe is sacred, right? But anyways, going back to um, how we all got here and stuff, um, Josh, you were the first guy to motivate our team, like our actual core guys, into getting a battle bus, a little room, a studio, a green screen. I got to thank you for that, man. Uh, well, that's <laughs> I was invited because you guys were wanting to put together a podcast. And I thought, well, that's really great because I – well, that's what I, that's what I said to you, Josh, and that's once you said to me that you wanted to be you, you were doing that radio show. I said, would you be? I thought, well, you'd be perfect because you you see how it's done in the first place. But I was wrong because you've just taken so long to get this going. So um, <laughs> maybe I should have gone with someone else. Yeah, but, um, I could have told you that. <laughs> when did you get that camera up? <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought I was into a project that was already sort of on the ground and running, so I was trying to figure out how to hit that moving. <laughs> but it wasn't. To we we told you we were getting in on the ground floor, but we gave you a shovel in real life. <laughs> <laughs> right, but my question to the group was: All right, sweet. What kind of microphone do I buy? And I got all kinds of responses. Not thinking, not realizing that no one else had bothered to buy a microphone, just you know, Mo that much of a podcast. Yet. Mostly being microphone. What's that? <laughs> but yeah, so from then I just it was just a matter of all right, well, let's just see what we could come up with, and everything and was grassroots, and everybody drops out. Fuck you, Google. Ugh. I'm anyway. here though. I'm listening. Go. It's me crazy. So yeah, it was all just kind of a thing. Well, we need a logo. Let's see what we can come up with. That's three. All right. Well, right. We do, uh, logo work. We can have some graphics. Shout out this. to my brother for the logo work for sure, it, and for the early website help. Him and Cal got us started on that. Well, that was just it. Once we mm -hmm. it was like everybody was going to the table. Once we started we can do this, we can do this. And I can try to do that. I, I'll make an attempt and, well, here's my draft. Here's a copy. Here's my submission. Let's see what this is. Worth. Everybody oh, yeah. Everybody it. jumped on hard with everything, man. Everybody started Ooh. jumping on with name ideas and logo ideas and format ideas. We have quite a lot of creative talent in this group oh, of people yeah. we've assembled. I, if I remember correct, Walt, it was it was your a hybrid of your and our my name suggestions that ended up with the realm, and then yep. it was Josh that was the genius that put the FE in there and linked it all together as the egg. Yes, sir. Uh, you remember, Walt? I didn't want anything to do with this part of it. <clears throat> yes, sir. I do remember. You didn't even want to be. You didn't even want to come and talk to us at first. Because he just wants hangouts. He wants to take the pictures. He wants to. Do the legwork. Nah, no, I just didn't think. Yeah, well, I was a hillbilly, redneck. Hmm. Well, you have heard me talk, bit. right? Okay. You've, you've heard me talk. Mm. Yeah, Rob is so worried like about the accent bringing the whole show down, and you know we don't care. It's okay. You do know, like Crocodile Dundee was a huge movie here in America, right? Never heard of it. Hmm. <laughs> Steve Irwin ring a bell? <laughs> mm, nah. Oh, he was huge in Kerblakistan. I've heard of um Billy Ray Cyrus. Ah, uh, yeah. Good old Billy Ray. Some gave all. I gave some. Mm. So I got an out of field question. Who do you think is the next celebrity to go away to the outer ring and take retirement? Should we put bets on it? 
I would love to. I was watching an episode of this uh, Canadian show named Mr. D, and uh, they were doing a death pool on all the teachers, and it was just hilarious because uh, one of the people in one of the chats, and they're like, uh, we should we should take a poll. Who's, who's going to bite it next? Who's the next death? And do we think the Queen's dead already? Thoughts? I don't know. I sent those articles to John and Adam, since that's their homeland, to see if they had any thoughts on it. And they never really got back to me on it. That are the one where allegedly she was saying things about the kids being in danger. And another one that she allegedly was talking about the reptilians. Well, here's the thing. Last year, she said that it was her last Christmas it, or it would be the last Christmas. Do you remember that tape? Getting I do indeed. Out. Enjoy yeah. your last Christmas. Yep, yep, yep. And it was like the, the staff at the BBC or at the, the place uh, confirmed it. And like, so maybe she knew that she was going to die or that she was getting moved or re rolled out. And that's why yeah, that. Ancient reptilians rarely die. No, just no, so just her, her body, her figure. Don't, she'll just go into something else. Maybe. I just might put on the record that I, I'm not. I'm not privy to any of that sort of stuff, and I don't know if I buy it at all. Nah, it's just too too out there for me. I get you, and it is out there. It really is. But if you start putting together some of the old tales of beings from somewhere else, I don't. That don't doesn't necessarily mean they came from some fake space ball floating outside somewhere on another fake gas ball. This whole idea of lands beyond ice ring lands beyond antarctica other worlds that have been talked about i mean other continents that have been talked about historically atlantis lemuria mew there's lots of records throughout oh, lots yeah. of cultures about these places so what if these beings are from out there and, and they are advanced enough to take advantage of some technology that we have no concept that to us looks for lack of a better word like magic to quote horribly arthur c clark that's pretty cool. Um, I was watching a television show with my girlfriend. It was called Intruders. And basically it was a story of every body has two souls. And the souls and everybody gets kicked again. I'm right here. Every time you talk, you kick everybody off. Quit doing that, man. You don't if you want the floor that bad, Josh, we'll shut up, man. You don't have to kick us all out. <laughs> a couple different machines. Maybe host it on one machine. R remind me I have something to say about the real times after you. We're done. pissing off the robots. That's what's wrong. <laughs> robots. The buzz the buzzwords are getting called in the filter. Yeah, and it's like kick that out. So I don't want to give too much away, too many spoilers on the TV show Intruders. It was probably worth a watch. Um, yeah. The basic is immortality for these souls and how they could basically die and come back if the soul itself could have the willpower enough in the afterlife to overcome the other soul for the body, then that soul could just keep waking up and basically be immortal, an immortal soul in different bodies throughout time. It was a really interesting show, um, The Intruders. I think it was on Netflix. Or yeah, I'll check that out for sure. Yeah, I'll check that out. Thanks, man. So you attempt to say about the reptilians, James? Mm, I did indeed. Another point to think of is um, we right away, um, as people have a huge cognitive dissonance towards hybridization and hybrids and that thing, um, so it's entirely plausible that there was also or is intelligent life, not from outer space, from anywhere else, but maybe from uh, a hybridization program, half animal, half human, half something else um, that is out there and that, you know, is causing these things. And, you know, yeah. Just, like, I guess intelligent halflings that, you know, that's, I guess, what I'm saying. I believe it's plausible. I'd say it's definitely plausible. They're working on some insane things with the uh, Human Genome Project and allegedly just trying to, you know, map our genetic code. 
but they're doing some pretty crazy stuff. It's all out there. I don't want to get into all that because that'll be a very downer show. But definitely, mm-hmm. if you look into some of the genetic engineering that's going on, places like Dulce. Mm, that's right. Check it out. Mm-hmm. It's out there. Mount Herman facility, the UN. Check that one out. Um, what's the one in uh, the Northeast United States? It was in that movie with uh, um, the Avengers it, or something. So there's a little town in New Jersey, I think it was, called Lyme. And it, they first developed a strange disease. Montauk? No, it wasn't Montauk. It was an island, I think. I'd have to I'm, look it up. Well, this is where they were doing uh, like the militar- militarization of diseases and how to spread them throughout armies. And they were using like ticks and they were, they were infecting these ticks with these strange diseases so they could try to infest these armies and spread the disease through these strange ticks. And I guess one of these ticks got out and somehow found its way to this little town on the coast called Lyme. And that's where Lyme's disease first showed up. And this is why Crazy. deer ticks. I wish I could remember the name of that damn place where they were developing Lyme disease. I'll find it. I'll just actually have to go to Google now that I fucked Google. It's just man, man, <laughs> manufactured diseases. That was a crazy story. Well, you've got that show, you know, there's a lot of truth in shows, but um, you remember years Sorry. and years and years ago. They had that um, show V. Remember that with the reptiles? Oh yeah. Remember that? Didn't didn't they have to drink rotten milk or something? Sour milk was like booze to them. No, so, that that was a different movie. That was James Caan and Mandy Patinkin, and the name of that movie was. Uh, the Insiders. No, I don't. Know. No, come on, James. I'm, they, I'm I, trying to stump you. I don't know. Well, give me another clue. I need another clue. I need years in 80, 84. Oh, it was 80s. It was uh, 80s. James Conn, Tough Cop, Mandy Patinkin, Alien. Come on. That's like a giveaway. Oh, shoot. I, I, now it's just in my I, – yeah, I do. I know it. Of course I do. I just can't think of the name. <laughs> that's, the, that's the one. He had to, they got drunk drinking sour milk. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, I'm, it's going to come to me. Well, what was it? Yeah, what was it? You're muted, Walt. <laughs> Everybody, you muted. You muted, Walt. Oh, every time I hit it, I guess it, I kept hitting it back twice. That was <laughs> Alien Nation. Sorry, yes, Mandy Patinkin, uh, James Kahn. They actually had a little series about it too. Yes, but yes, they did. That's right. It wasn't mm-hmm. as good. As V to me, V was really good back in the eighties, and then they redid it recently, and it was not too bad. Do you know what was not bad in the eighties, early eighties? Invaders from Mars, not a bad. Oh yeah, oh believable, almost you know. Enemy it was good from the eighties. Yes, sir. Ta-da-ha! I used to make his voice, but I don't have. I'm dry right now. I need something to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, all right. Well, what else are we going to talk about? What? Well, we're trying to stay off John's video until he gets here, but he must be having some mm. trouble. Mm-hmm. Well, you talked about what's going to happen That's with the transition. In like three or four anything? days, right. Is there any, anything starting to happen in any of the cities? I guess we'll see more. Sorry. The only thing pretty crazy that I've seen was a presentation, a video, which I can send here in a minute, on the fact that for the first time ever, Obama created an exit team that is probably three or four times the size of his cabinet while he was sitting president. Uh, You know, pack your bags and go is not really that complicated. It's not that necessary to build a team to do it. And part of his team are members of FEMA, members of Homeland Security, uh, lots of stuff about potential this, maybe that. 
emergency this. It sounds like they're setting something up. Really, truly it does. An emergency task force. Something, some kind of false flag to call a big martial law thing to shut it down so Trump can't get in office and he gets to sit as King Obama. Is, is there any truth to uh, Josh that um, he's going for the U.N.? I heard that, but you can never tell. Have you heard it in the U.S.? Someone mentioned that in the chat I've, room not long ago. I've definitely heard that. Um how true that is, I don't know. I also heard he wasn't leaving the presidency, so. Yeah. Is that believing half of what you, none of what you hear? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. These are just things I'm, I'm hearing over this last couple, three weeks. Lots of and alleged if, predictive programming about uh, well, look at Trump the, not even making it yeah. physically to the White House, you know? Mm-hmm. What's the date today, gentlemen? It will be Friday the 13th, full moon Friday the 13th. And oh. some kind of Jewish thing happening historically, if I remember correctly, but I don't want to misquote a name. Wait, you, you better not. I'm going to verbally shame you before you even bring it up. Because <laughs> that's how we roll. No, um, you're right. It is. That's a, a big omen. We should do supernatural stuff today. Freaky Friday. <laughs> Well, there you go. My Friday the thirteenth is over, and I didn't even realize. You made it. <laughs> Future boy, I made it. I tell you what, that moon that I was f uh, photographing last night was a completely different color to the moons that I've been photographing uh, all the other nights this week. It's probably because it was leaving here through such a haze. I went out there to take some pictures, and it was just pure haze. I could see a big white blob in the sky, but I could not make out the moon. So it was just passing through a big, huge haze over us, getting to you. I was also going to redo my moonlight experiment last night, but there wasn't actually enough rays to create a shadow. So what? maybe tonight. What color was it, Rob? Was it like a, a, a yellow, a creamy yeah. yellow? Yellow. Yeah, yellow. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I think we've all seen a yellow moon before, haven't you guys? Oh, yeah. S -s Something to them, though. Mm, so now I'll... I wish I had those. Yeah, that's what I tried to do this morning before I come on here was download a couple of those photos, but me camera wouldn't allow me to, so... <laughs> But I'll um, see if I can do it a little bit later. So and um, Adam's Adam's taking some good shots too. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I'm Hi. here. Yep. Yeah, Adam's taking some good shots too. So now I might just stick to um, island shots and mountain shots and all that sort of stuff. But um, and moon shots, but yeah, the stars just don't seem to be working for me. You'll get it. We just got to find the right sentence for you. Yeah, with stars, it's a whole different thing. You want to have almost a moonless night, if possible, so you don't get moonlight washing your camera, and then open it as wide as you can, and leave the exposure as open as you can for taking a picture. Then if you're doing the, uh, trying to get the video effect of that cymatic thing, it's all about a little less open, a little faster speed, but you still want it pretty open. And again, this is just me playing around with my phone since I got it back in July, trying to take those same pictures. I can make them happen. They're just not very clear. And I get a lot of noise on the video because of it having to be a uh, digital zoom rather than the optical zoom that you have. But again, I'm not playing with that big bad boy like you are. So it may be a whole different game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's, there's just a thousand settings on there, you know, and the manual that it came with doesn't tell you anything. So I've had to go online and download the PDF for it. Now I'm going through that. I Watch just, YouTube videos. Yeah, I know a trick that works, but it's just going to take a lot of time. Get yourself uh, one of the school notebooks and a pen and start watching tutorials and writing stuff down. That way you got it in your own book and you always have it. Yep. Yeah. 
Well, apparently it's not going to get rid of me today, so that's crazy. That's Everybody really keeps getting kicked off. I don't know. What the hell? But I will take this moment to say that Lyme's disease was found on the coast of Long Island. Came from a place called Plum Island. And on Plum Island is the Plum Island Animal Disease Center run by the United States government. And I, there's been a few things that I think that have washed up on the Jersey Shore that I think they've thought maybe came from Montauk, the Montauk Monster maybe. Some really yep. strange things that have washed up on the shore that I think are probably coming from Montauk or from Plum Island just based on what they're doing there and sort of the crazy dark history of what's going on. And it seems to me right. that Jesse Ventura might have even done one of his conspiracy shows on Plum Island. Mm. And let me ask you this. Is there a Freemason connection to that island as well? You just made me think of Oak Island again. And there's a Freemason connection there. Probably. It wouldn't surprise me. Being upstate New York in an island controlled by the United States government, what are the odds that it's not got some Freemason connections? Highly unlikely that it doesn't. Situated in Gardner's Bay, east of Orient Point, off the eastern end of North Folk Coast of Long Island, Suffolk County, New York. You know what the sad thing is? A lot of people are going to be in trouble. A lot of people are going to be in pain tonight because of just the date and what it means to certain cultures and what certain rituals and traditions are. I mean... I have a lot of knowledge on bloodlines, but that's nothing you want to talk about on the uh, air. So if you have any questions, you can get a hold of me on Twitter or, um, you know, just search uh, blood murder. <laughs> yeah, this is that time of year. And I guess even that time of month i suppose with the full moon on the friday the 13th where it doesn't usually bode well for some people things end very horribly mm. Mm -hmm. well just all of us warriors have to send reinforcements and being a warrior out there you know exactly what i'm talking about absolutely darkness all around but one thing that darkness where it won't be found is in the light all it takes is can penetrate an entire room full of darkness. This uh, that, isn't that the greatest thing. Eh? The little, little tiny candle can light the entire entire cave. Oh, it looks like Rob found us. Yeah, oh. I went and made myself a coffee. Damn it! I thought you blocked him. Ooh. Can't stop me. No. One of our followers <clears throat> from Twitter, DD Tayside says hello on the live chat. Hello, DD. Hey, DD. What's up, man? DD retweets some of my stuff. So he or she's on Twitter. DD's awesome. And uh, I'm just going to say again we apologize for adding you to that chat without asking. Um, but we'd love to have you back one day. Oh, yeah, definitely. And love the things you do on Twitter. And I see that we have zero viewers right now, so I'll take this chance to say that if you want to get a hold of us, you can call us on our flat line. There you code 503-304-FLAT. That's 3528. Um, we're on Skype. Iron Room on Skype. Give us a call. You call the flat line and we don't answer. You can leave a message or you can even send us a text to that number. We get text messages there. You contact Iron Realm at any time. So what would you guys... Sorry, Josh, that was awesome. Sorry, go ahead. We cover the whole realm, so there's usually somebody awake at all times. Somewhere, somewhere on the plane here, on the plane, one of us is usually awake. I was just going to ask you, Josh, so what is Iron Realm and what is Iron Realm Media? What is uh, the fringe and what is Have No Sphere? What indeed? 
Well, Iron Realm is the name that we came up with. Iron Realm Media is the all-encompassing name of the organization that we've created from this little Twitter group. Once we took an inventory of all of our capabilities and saw what we could possibly do, and the potential that we had, we saw that a podcast wasn't enough and we needed to think bigger. So a podcast talking about Flat Earth turned into what is now called Iron Realm Media. The mm. Iron Realm, because we live in a realm, we don't live on a planet. Mm. We can have people credit the quote to Tesla saying that this is not a planet, it's a realm. Whether he said that or not, I don't know. Whoever, somebody said it, obviously. So kudos to them because that's a good fucking quote, regardless of who said it. Uh, right. Amen. The iron. Amen. Greg, because the periodic table of elements, the symbol for iron is FE. And since we live in a flat earth realm, an FE realm, an iron realm just made sense. And since we do more than podcasts, we are Iron Realm Media. So, well that said. being said. And uh, shout out to one of my followers, and I think a couple of you guys have him as well, Sag MacDeck. I don't know how to say it exactly. But, yeah, he and I were going back and forth on some, like, etymology and words and things. And uh, I believe he's the one that threw that back at me one time, the F.E. thing. Mm. Kudos. Josh, going with what you said, I mean, uh, on our other branches, it's going to be great to cover things like um, false flags and, you know, uh, media events in, in our uh, fringe area of things. And it's awesome focusing on destroying this globe of the uh, have no sphere sites. So I uh, look forward to continuing to work and build and grow as we go. Yeah, I think there's lots of good things in store for us in the future. That's the thing about Flat Earth, for me anyway. I had been deeply into some conspiracy theories throughout my life and had thought I had uncovered a whole lot of things and knew a pretty good idea of how this world worked. And turns out I didn't have a clue about most of it. You know, even though I knew there was a lot of shenanigans in our government, I didn't know that it was all as big a charade as what I now know as the media sources we all used to trust is just a big show. So this alleged flat earth psyop turned out to be the best psyop ever. For me, anyway. Yeah. It's kind of hard to say that it's not a psyop, just the way that it was being presented on YouTube. That's just another example of them us underestimating us, then. Let's I've been doing a lot of DMing with um, that dude, the Capstone or whatever his name is. Well, right, Captain Scorch or something. Yeah, Cap. Yeah, whatever his name is, and um, he's um. I had a long, long, long conversation with him, and he's the perfect example of he's, you know, he's into the stars, and he'll never get it. I send him my video, and then he comes back with, yeah, that's a that's a, a superior mirage or or whatever. I can't remember even what he said now. And then he sent me all those other photos of superior mir uh, mirages, and and he was trying to say that, yeah, that's a he was trying to say that my video is a proof of a globe Earth. And I went, what? I, know, I don't get that either. <laughs> no. huh? A globe is supposed to said, I said, I shouldn't be seeing that at all. And then I sent him that angular, angular video that I love. It's my number one video um, on what you shouldn't, shouldn't be able to see and the superior mirages and all that sort of stuff. So hopefully you watch that. Um, it, it's impossible to get through to some. It's impossible, and and they would think that about us as well. That it's impossible for them to get through to us. No, but, you know, but I can see where they're coming from. 
<coughs> especially with the stars, because for me, the stars. Yeah, man, cognitive dissonance, I mean, some people just won't see it. They just will not see anything other than what they have read in a book or been told by a teacher and all their peer-reviewed mm. bullshit. Uh, BS, sorry. Mm, no, so, no, the, as I've said before, you know, the sun and the stars and everything, they all make sense to me on a globe. But I know it's not. <laughs> so, so maybe I'm in yeah. Who's that? Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, I, I, yeah, we, we should get him on there. I'll even, um, I'll text him now and see if he wants to join. Jeez. Frogs. Is that what the fuck that is? It sounded like some wicked echoing feedback shit. I didn't know what the hell. Yeah, I know. The technical issues continue. I think you're right, Rob. <laughs> we need to find a new dude. <laughs> no, that was a frog in, um, in a drain that's right, right beside me. What? We need to record that. Sample it and put it in the song, James. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny you said that. I got a couple tunes uh, made yesterday, and some of our upcoming work is going to feature my own original stuff as well as a, uh, a real life buddy of mine, Stan. So, shouts out to him and his music and uh, our work. Nice. I actually met a person in my life that awesome. I did not know was flat recently, and then yesterday I found out that person is also a musician. So, he and I may be bringing some tunes your way, sir. Excellent, excellent. I'm your Huckleberry. Love that movie. Yeah, it's a really good one. Outstanding. Somewhere I've got to have... Uh... What's the other good line from that? You're a daisy if you do. Yeah, hey, old um, Val Kilmer was a sickly looking bastard at the end of that movie, wasn't he? But he still mm -hmm. wanted to fight. True story. That that's okay, Corral, isn't it? That's what they say. Mm. Was the Wild West as wild as what the, they make out? I suspect. Yeah. I've heard little things that um, you know they've built it up to become. A little bit more wild than what it what it really was. Pretty hard to imagine that you know civilized people would go around shooting each other like that, you know, in plain sight all the, all the time. And you know, that's just hard to imagine. Well, I'm sure it wasn't quite like that. I mean, just because somebody sees it portrayed 47 times in a movie, they think that it just happened all the time. Because every time they think they see a movie about Cowboys, that's how cowboys acted. So mm. how, yeah, like uh, Billy the Kid, Billy the Kid riding into the town and shooting every bastard. I don't, I don't know. Don't know about that. <laughs> Go, goes deeper too. Not only that, you're programmed in your in your subconscious to think of it. What's the first thing you say before you talk about the West? Wild. Oh, people are getting shot everywhere. It's wild. It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> what about I've been watching game shows? What about, um, and I've thought about it a lot, what about in Braveheart days where your two, two um, enemies or opposing sides on hills and then they run at each other and hit each other with axes and fucking Dude. swords and shit like that. I'll tell you, man. I'd be in the nights. The nights. I'd be in the night air because, you know, <laughs> there's some regality to it. If you have a dispute, a real, real... Oh, really? Seriously, everybody went that time. Everybody. See, I knew it happened. Roundhouse, finally. Yep. That's ridiculous. Full house. And I've got a signal on my internet. There's no... Mm. 
Yeah, anyway, what was I saying? I was saying bloody Braveheart, bloody running at each other with axes. Imagine the thoughts running through your head. Oh, fuck that. Um, <laughs> this, this one of my favorite subjects. Well, at least when you talk about the way I relate to it is um, that same old Prussian education. Prussia being one of the world's most undefeatable armies until it was finally defeated. I think it was a mercenary group from Prussia that Napoleon had hired. And I think they lost and it embarrassed Prussia so bad. Prussia had to totally rethink how it created soldiers. And they realized they had to train them young. And they would... Prussia would mandate that the parents turn over their children to be trained by the government for a certain amount of hours or a certain amount of days in order to create these perfect little soldiers or these perfect little workers for the state for this very ridiculous sized army. What they needed was obedience. All of their army and obedience in that battle with Napoleon. That's where we get the Prussian education system now. And Prussia did such a good job with their education at molding their minds of the youth to make them good little slaves. That that's how we have our public ed public school education system we have now. It's all modeled from that Prussian system. So that's what's going through their mind is that's what they're trained to do. They don't think about it. It's mindless fucking action. When the teacher says stand and place your hand over your heart and pledge allegiance to that flag in the corner, you stand up and you do it. You don't think about it. You repeat it. You do it every day. So you don't think about it when they ask you to do it. That's the Prussian education system. So when you're in the army and they drill you and they drill you and you drill you and your commander says, okay, now charge, you fucking charge. You don't think about it. You just do it. It's military brainwashing. It's Prussian education system. It's all the same crazy bullshit. That's mind control brainwashing. That's the whole problem with everything around me. There. You guys wanted me to rant? I ranted. I'm loving it, brother. Go. Mm, that was fantastic. That was really accurate, man. Keep going. That is what's yep. happening. That's what I had to Brilliant. say. Brilliant. But not only do they do that militarily, they do that consumer consumer wise. They do that um, um, NASA science wise. We get indoctrinated the same way as kids, even younger sometimes. I think now because the parents are already so hooked that they're right in the womb. They're like, "Well, we've got to do this for the kid, and we've got to play this music, and we've got to do this." Like, give well, me a give me a break. In America, when you introduce this i this idea of individual sovereignty of individual freedom that they try to preach in America to this Prussian education system. There is again, that dissonance where the whole brain just says, well, this isn't working out. Why would I want to keep doing this? So they have to continually distract that part of the brain. So the other part will continue to obey. So as long as they can keep them occupied with something, the other part will just continue to obey and they'll continue to just react without thinking. So that's where we introduce consumerism and sports ball and all this other stupid, mindless alcohol. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's it. It's ridiculous. Like I said earlier, there's a hook for everybody. If you have a uh, scientific, calculative type, oops, sorry, a, a mind that looks at that kind of Better quit it. Sorry, I'm having trouble with my sound here. If you have a mind that looks at things scientifically, then they'll catch you in that area and get you looking at the stars and get you caught up in scientism. If you're more that, like you said, the sports ball oriented person, then they've got a whole world of distraction for you there. My goodness, it's the national pastime, you know? So if, if there's something, if you're not that person that has that military mindset, they're going to have some distraction waiting in another direction for you to keep you sidetracked. <clears throat> well, that's how they catch you. And as John Savage once said, if he was here, it takes few to control many. And, that, and there's a lot of wisdom in that. 
I was watching that 9-11 video, <clears throat> another one yesterday, and um, this this dude went and um, uh, went to a firefighters, uh, like a, it was like a meet the firefighters in this particular city, and you know, there's hundreds of firefighters there, and he went and asked them some questions about 9-11, and all of them were denying that it's a conspiracy, and and that's what they're told to say, you know, they're, they're not allowed to... They're not, they're not allowed to bring it up. They're, they're not allowed to talk about it. And that, that tells you something, doesn't it? Yeah. It must make them feel very uncomfortable, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. One dude went, went to start talking about it, but um, his captain or would sort of give him a give him a look and, what are you doing? Well, that and he shut up pretty quickly. Really? And, um, and um, a couple of, there were a couple of girls that, that were asked and, one of the girls said, "Oh, no comment." She goes, "Thanks for asking, but yeah, no comment." I don't know. And um, then they got. Oh, he, he asked a couple of firefighters in some other area, and they said, "Yeah, yeah, we talk about that all the time." Yeah, <laughs> so it'd be, you know, three hundred of them died or some of like that. You couldn't imagine they wouldn't talk about it. That's you know, nice. it'd be it'll be yeah, it'd be hard to. I don't know. How could you be as a normal person not not talk about stuff like that? I don't care who I work for. If they did they did wrong, they wouldn't they wouldn't shut me up. No way. Who's really? to say that those firefighters aren't going to be um, in the next little planned event and they and they've got to run into a burning building that's doomed. Know what I mean? Oh yeah, there's going to be something. But how will it come? They will. What was that, Josh? How will they know until it's too late? These are getting smashed today. Yeah, who knows? That's right. They, they'll. Yeah, that's right. You'd be, you'd be worried all the time, wouldn't you? Yeah. My yeah. goodness. Yeah, we're all getting that's smashed. No I know. I got back on for half a second and then got kicked right back off again. <clears throat> mm. The last thing I heard was Rob was talking about 9-11. The firefighters. Yeah, oh, the yeah. Firefighters, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the firefighters not not allowed to talk. No matter where you go, I don't think they're allowed to talk. We're going to be in that little area tomorrow of Lafayette where that uh, – Monument or whatever it is, I'll try to catch some pictures and send it to you guys. Yep. Find out how many there are. There are all over the uh, country too. I'd like to see them. We'll find out. Like I'm sure there's information on the little plaque there that'll tell me. No, uh, because there are lots of places. I mean, the one by my house is. I mean, there's probably one within five miles of my house. I had an interesting theory yesterday too on one of those videos with, you know, how we got the architects and engineers for 9-11 and we've got the pilots for 9-11 as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That they're all just controlled. Mm -hmm. They're there for people like you and me to think that there's something going on because architects for and engineers for 9-11 have always said that we want a new investigation, but nothing ever happens. You know, they do their rallies. Not sure if they do paid rallies. So they're going around getting paid for doing what they're doing. I'm not sure. But um, they, they've been talking for, you know, 11, 11 10, 10 or 11 years now that they, they want a new investigation, but nothing ever, ever happens, does it? All these people are burning up. You know, 50 or 60% of America knows that the buildings didn't fall down the way that they were told, but nothing ever happened. So this guy was saying that, you know, all, all the people that you see getting interviewed, all the, all the major ones, and there's a Rudy Dent, I think, is a firefighter, a dark firefighter that's retired now, and he does a lot of interviews. And um, what's his name? Richard Gear, Richard Gear, Richard Gage. Sorry, Richard Gear. Richard Gage from 911 uh, Architects. You know, he does all these talks. So it's just, it's hard to believe that for 12, 13 years and there's so many people that they wouldn't do a new investigation, you know, if, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It does seem strange. Yeah. 
yeah, there's all these people, you know, doing all these rallies all the time, and we know how many people are, especially in America, not here. Wow, there's still a big, big dissonance even in the U.S. I mean, look at people. People even get offended here when when you say, "Oh, that didn't happen." And we're, I'm Canadian, and we get people giving you flack. Imagine in the U.S. There's a lot of people who are like, "Oh, I'll fucking knock your teeth out if you tell me no people died." You know, like you got to be careful still. Oh, people, people died. Oh, well, what are you talking about there? You're not talking about 9/11. You're talking about other stuff, are you? Yeah, a little 9-11. People still died, the unfortunate ones that actually were used. But, I mean, there was maybe three, four people in the building. I think all the, the deaths were ancillary, to be honest. You think? So all the photos and all the names, they're all, you know. I don't know, man. What do you think? How, what do you think the know. percentage is? Like, is it, are we talking Holocaust things? Like numbers, you know. Well, out of the three thousand, I would say at least fifteen hundred to two thousand. That's what I'd reckon. Mm. But a lot and, of those are responsible. Yeah, they had to spill right? blood for their ritual. I mean, there were deaths, yeah. I think. Oh yeah, and but lots of them. Not like. Oh, there was. Like... Yeah, I don't know. It. You couldn't knock two buildings down like that and not have lots and lots of casualties. Well, if you see uh, Walt's picture, though, you, you can have no casualties, especially if the if it's a, a a gun that obliterates energy. But I don't know. Mm. We, all, we all we can agree on it's a bloody sacrifice ritual that was false. Mm. PK's been getting right into this um, Fort Lauderdale one. You been looking at that at all? Nope. The Fort Lauderdale oh, Hollywood yeah. airport shooting. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's a, saw, big, fake, that's fake a fake. shocker as well. They got the double actor. It's a shocker. Yeah. Yep. Every time I see that video, it gets pulled too. <laughs> Somebody posts it when you hit the link, it's not there. All right. Who, who made that one? I'm not sure who made it. Uh, the first time I saw it, somebody had posted it in the chat, and I went and watched it, and then I reposted it, and then someone said, your tweets go into an empty link, and I went to it, and the video wasn't there anymore. So I found it again and reposted it, and same thing, link not there. So they keep pulling it with that chick that's sitting down, and then they all get up and go to another location right as the camera gets off of them, and then they interview her later with a jacket on, and you can see the same shirt and all that stuff. All right. And so people are saying, oh, well, that's just a different interview later at a different location, blah, blah, blah. Well, why would they do the same person if all these hundreds of people are, you know, there for options to interview? And it just doesn't make any sense, no matter how you like, look at it. Yeah. And then there's another video that I saw earlier today that apparently from one of the bombings in Syria or whatever, and they show all the people getting up and showing peace signs at the camera after the... Uh, News cameras cut off. They're all doing quite, their good little job is making the propaganda against America. It's quite a few of those if you look. Yeah. Mm. But, you know, you show that to people and they're just sitting there watching nightly news every night getting more and more programmed. I just don't understand anyone watching TV and thinking it's real in any way, any of it. I like watching TV Hashtag when I know it's. <clears throat> I like watching TV when I know it's not real. Oh, I do too. You don't have. You don't have to even think about it. You just. You just watch. You know. You, the news. You can't. You can't watch the news and think it's serious. No, not at all. Oh my gosh! Um, this morning, um, my lady was showing me something she was watching on CNN today. Hilarious! It was uh, Trump's um, manager, that Kellyanne Conway. And she was just bashing, um, uh, what's his name? The little robot that with the neat hair and all the weird eating habits. Sorry, that sounds really judgmental, but um, God, what's his name? Uh, Anderson Cooper. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the man. one I saw earlier. Dude. And he's just like, bah, 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 bah. and she's like, you're in the Like, yeah. it, was, it was great. It was it funny. Was but it's fake. I mean, it's still all part of the shit show, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, no, there's been a few in the last um, week or two weeks, isn't there? There's been, mm-hmm. been a number of them. You can't keep up with them. Yeah, it's been very interesting. How does that job site get on the television? <laughs> Love it. Hashtag kill your TV. Hashtag kill your TV. Mm. So what's been going on, James? Oh, nothing much, man. I've been doing um, a bunch of research on some other things for my medical conditions, trying to find alternatives to what these uh, stupid big pharma doctors want to shove down my throat. Which that's a whole show. I mean, in its own. But I wish John was here because it's definitely it's just need to cover that topic. Yes, sir. Ridiculous how much I, I'm think actually thinking about starting a blog, maybe chronicling the, how the stages of ridiculousness are, where even a country like Canada that's pretty liberal and like laid back, they have such a fierce um, ingrained knowledge i don't know if they pick it up in in college or when they become doctors to to get you on fixing it short term you know like short term solution for for big problems so it's really disappointing and i have to start looking at other methods and and other ways to you know handle it because i just i can't imagine you know it was actually my girlfriend that said my lady that said something so smart to me um, because a couple of my close friends has, have dealt with pain for many years as well and have been on the whole run of it. And now what works for her is taking these cortis something, these cortisol, and then a, it's like a cocktail of drugs. And she, she gets it injected into her back. And um, it works from anywhere from three months to 14 months, right? So I was looking at that. And then another friend, another friend I know on the realm here, he knows somebody that gets these injections and then, yeah, they can work anywhere five, four, two months to 15 months. Right. So I, I'm just, you know, thinking about it and thinking about it and I'm like, all right, well, what the heck, you know, maybe it is better than like not taking pills and not doing, you know, the organic medical route. And, and my girlfriend, she looks at me and she goes, you want to take something that's going to sit in your body and work for fucking 14 months. What kind of half life do you think that has? What do you? What kind of medicine are you gonna put in that works for fourteen months? That's a pain reliever. I wouldn't do it. And I was just like, oh, good point. So you got to be real careful with it. Is what I'm finding. Agreed. Yes, sir. There are lots of things that are options that you might want to definitely dig into a little deeper before you go letting yourself be uh, treated by doctors. Because unfortunately, nine times out of 10, they are just creating a patient for life. That's their objective. If you get cured, you're gone. If you figure out how to cure yourself, you won't be back through their doors. You are no longer part of their income flow. So let's fix the symptom and create new symptoms that we can fix later and you'll be a patient for life. Mm. Right, the business model is repeat customers. And they get guilt shamed into not repping the meds anyways because half of those companies gave them a car or perks or sponsored them coming up right out of college, right out of high school, right into med school. So it's a it's a unfair system, that's for sure. Hey, um, Watched a Jaren video yesterday uh, about the curvature of the students in um, Leicester in America and in Britain sent up a weather balloon. Did you see that video? It's only 20 minutes long. See that one? No, I did not. Anyway, <clears throat> and and it's all over the papers in in Britain with um, students um, show curvature of the Earth from this balloon. If you go onto the video, because they've got a they've got a video. Obviously, they've just taken the stills of the curvature of the Earth. They get up to seventy thousand feet with this balloon, and the curvature is about the same as what the ISS shows. 
But if you go to the video and click on the video, the exact same curvature is is there when they're taken off on the balloon. <laughs> it's, oh, it's just pathetic, isn't it? Oh, oh. It's, it's, it's pathetic, you know? That's you know obviously, they, the papers put in the stills <laughs> of, of the 70,000 feet shots, you know, and they say there's the curvature of the earth. Now, see, we need to go after the school. That's bullshit. Mm. I mean, where, where is the integrity? Where's the intellectual integrity? Yeah. That's right. They, there they, is no. That's a have university. Ever, that's a that's a university putting that shit out. Have you guys ever seen? I'm sure you have the video from a few years back where they were showing how a boat disappearing over the horizon from the hull up shows the curvature, and it's a camera set up on the beach, and someone goes in and analyzes this video, and you can see how they've waited for waves to hit. And the height of the camera changes two or three times, and the angle of the waves change two or three times. So they're creating the effect with the camera and the waves. And this was put out by UCLA. You know, this is a university video that's proven the curvature, fake in the video. So, yeah, there's no integrity in the education system for sure. No. No, I, you know, Jeremy puts out some good videos like that, you know, and he, he puts out some good stuff. And I always really enjoyed that one. But um, yeah, I, you'd think the students would actually. You th you think the students might even say that's wrong, but the university puts it out. <coughs> well, I I know what happens in elementary school. The students say no, that doesn't sound right, and then, and they just no, honey, look at the textbook, look up at the board. Mm. I right. think it's it's elementary school or university students. I think. It's they're fed this idea that they're going to put this balloon into space to find the curvature. So that's what they're focused on. So that's what they're looking for. That's what they find. That's what they've done. For me, and, I, and I've said it for a long time, I believe that you should be able to see the curve. If, if you've got a full horizon to look at, you should be able to see the curve. Because if you've got a full horizon, say that's 30 or 40 miles from left to right, 30 or 40 miles. Horizontally? You, 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 yeah, you're horizontally. Oh, you've yeah. got a point. If you've got a point right in front of you and you go 20 miles one side and 20 miles the other, 20 miles is 200 feet. We'll just so shoot the top of be, it. From, from, so from left to right, you should be seeing 200 feet to, to if you're looking straight in front of you. That's, that's, just, that's just how it is. So that it should be noticeable in, in photographs, especially in photographs, just from a beach. That's that's the way I look at it. You shouldn't have to go too yeah, high yeah, yeah. to really, really noticeable. It it, it shouldn't be. Well, no, I mean, you need you need a full you need a full horizon. Pan well, you um, can use the um, you know? yeah. The panoramic doesn't have the yeah, fisheye yeah. distortion, and and you yeah, could probably right, you could get how far wide could you go? You think sixty k? With maybe you could do it with yours. Instead of measuring the the uh, no curve uh, vertically, you should we should uh, look at doing that. We will actually. Interesting. Mm, it's hard to I, see. I have islands in the way everywhere where I am. I can't get a good. Um, no, I love that. That's what I'm thinking. You get two yeah, that are I, on either end, and you shoot in between them, and you should see a curve, but there won't be. Mm, yeah, you, you agree with that, Walt, or not? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. As I live, I lived in Florida when I was about, I guess, 10, 11, something like that. And we used to go on like the keys down below Florida and you would be on an island looking almost 360 direction, you know, and in no direction could we see the curve. And we always thought being, you know, we grew up landlocked in central Mississippi. We always thought when you got out to the beach, you would be able to see the curve out on the horizon of the ocean and never, never saw it. And then anytime I've been on a plane as a kid or as a teenager or as an adult, always looked for that curve, never saw it, never could convince myself something was there that wasn't there. And this was way before I was, you know, even considering such a thing as a flat earth. I was just wanting to see the curve that I had heard about my whole life being a NASA fan. And I never saw it, never saw it. That's it. So now that'll be another good experiment for me to do. But um, yeah, it's hard here because I've got all the islands in my way. So yeah, very, very difficult to get a good, good um, wide shot of a full ocean. 
But um, that's the way I see it anyway. This takes us back to one of our earlier quote unquote shows. We were talking about the Baumgartner space jump. Exactly how far it is we can see when we're up that high. So versus you know what's really out there. So how good our eyesight is. I mean, how far is it you think we're actually being able to see? I mean, are we actually seeing to the horizon or are we only seeing as far as our eyes can see? No matter how, how high we get up, we still have that limited sight. How far can we see? Can we see further up that high because we're now out of the atmospheric gradient of density? Right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's wrong. <clears throat> oh no, it's just another experiment I can do, that's for sure. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. If you're best at your calculator, there's going to be lots of maths involved. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, well. I'm just going to duck off for a sec. <laughs> well, it looks like it's just you and I, sir. James leave too? <clears throat> yeah, he had to run take care of something. He said he sent me a little message. So well, all right. Well good. We need to get used to it anyway, shouldn't we? This is yes, sir. Podcast. Well, talking about this whole view distance to the horizon thing, um, I'm still waiting for someone to explain to me how seeing that quote unquote mirage convinces them that's a ball. I don't that makes absolutely no sense to me. All right. So here's what I think. What they're claiming is it's the atmospheric refraction, right? It's the mirage. And it's raising it up from below the curve of the ball. That's why you can see it. But then they turn around and say that seeing the ship going over the horizon is proof that it's curved. I mean, you can't have it both ways. The infamous double standard. Mm -hmm. That's <sighs> it. It's perfect. So it refracts it even above the horizon of the ocean. So you see the ship refracted above the ocean. from All the way from below the curve up above to where your sight can see up above that. That's how far and that's the little mirror edge um, hovering point that you see. Because that's how far over the hovering point that we can recreate on a football field or on a sidewalk inches away with a camera. You know, that's the funny part. That one. Uh -huh. That's what I think I'm going to work on next. I'm going to take the drone out to a football field and have it at a very low altitude. It's got a nice hover feature and do a video of it just disappearing into the distance like the sun and creating the air glow layer effect. I think my camera will do it. If I set it up low enough with a little tripod, and that might be something to work on this week, actually. If we have weather, it's actually been kind of bad and rainy here. I don't know. And then you guys are getting snowed in, huh? You want to load up my um, video, Josh? Sure. Show that, show that island? As long as you're not going to give us a cup, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I want, um, <laughs> I want um, credit. I want um, uh -oh. at least 10 bucks a minute. Actually, a second. It's only a short video. Uh, Adam's going to join us very, very shortly. All right. Sorry about that. That's great. I'm about to head out of here here in the next 30 minutes or so myself. I have some evening plans with friends. What you got going on? Hmm? 
we're gonna go eat and then do some little, little karaoke that'll be fun what you want to sing oh man sure you're gonna put me on the spot i don't even know it really doesn't matter it. everywhere i go they, well that our journey i mean that's pretty much all anybody wants me to sing is journey or guns and roses lots of classic rock that's my wheelhouse but I like a lot of stuff. I'll, I'll sing something that came out last week if I like it enough and learn it quick enough. Do you play the guitar? I do play the guitar. That's actually my guitar on some of our intro music that has a little bit of a heavy crunch to it. Okay. Play guitar, play a little keyboard. My brother is an excellent pianist. He was actually working on a song and, uh, while I was there in Oregon with them. And uh, I've yet to hear the finished product. <laughs> the, the holidays hit and then things kind of went away. That, that route, holidays tend to distract quite a bit. My goodness, it was crazy here. So what do you play, Rob? Bongos? Uh, I dabble in the guitar. I haven't played for a long time now. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, just all the Radiohead songs. I loved all them. Oh, that's great stuff. Yeah, yeah. Played in a pub one night when I was pissed. <laughs> that's what got me started doing karaoke. Getting a little took, took too the, tipsy. Uh, yeah, I took the guitar off the um, the guy who was doing the gig. He went and had a break, so I went and grabbed his guitar and played a song or two while he was having a break. Just in nice. front of all me mates. Yeah, I was pissed as a tick. <laughs> nervous, but I was nervous as. Yeah, that's what that liquid courage is all about. That helps with the nerves. What's going on, Josh? It's not wanting to play for me. Uh-oh. More technical fun. <clears throat> All right. I thought um, we could just get it, get on that island and just show how mirrored. It's, it's, it's not a mirage. It's mirrored. What do they call that? A superior mirage, Walt, is it? Yeah, it's inferior. In theory, where it's mirrored, yeah, but you can clearly you can clearly make out that the top is the same as the bottom. Exactly, exactly. So I still don't see how that supposedly makes perfect ball at all. All right, here we go. I think I put on here you had a P900 too for some reason, knowing you have a P7. You can see. Oh my, oh my god, god, it's hovering in the middle of the ocean, ocean is it? Nah, nah, yeah, that's mirror image. Um, I just saw that. Uh, is, it, is that what I heard? Can you, um, you aren't able to draw a line on there, you know, like you see people do, like they draw a flat line over the top of anything. You can't, you're not that advanced. Area code 503-304-2758. No. You can hear me, Josh? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, no, um. Just wonder if you were able to draw or where no. the, the no, but you can see that that's mirrored, and the, so the center of that image is the real horizon, is the real waterline. But I'd I'd love to go out in the boat and and check that, check the height of that place out myself. But I reckon it'd be no more than thirty or forty meters high, you know, forty fifty yards, I guess, if you're talking American terms. And, um, yeah, no way you should be seeing any of that. No way in the world. 
I don't care how much refraction there is. The refraction is not going to mirror it like that. And I always see that island. It's not like I drive past sometimes and the island's not there. It's always there. So refraction would, would show the island sometimes. It would, it would not show the island other times. It would be bigger sometimes. It'd be, yeah, it, but it's, that's, that's it. That's it. 19 miles. That's, yeah, I'd love to get out in a boat, get really, really close to it. But um, yeah, another experiment I'd like. But yeah, that, that's a cost. That's a cost-worthy one. That one because um, yeah, hire on a boat, all that sort of shit to get out there. Even if you just hire one, do it at night and just hire one with like a spotlight on the front. Mm. But as I said, you know, Josh, I've said it before. I need, I need, I need people with me. I can't, you know, because everyone that I know, they're not, they're not with me. <laughs> so what am I doing by myself? There's no way. There's no way. Yeah, I'm, no, it's I'm tough. Talking, any, doing... talking anyone into doing these things with me. There's no way in the world. I'm it. I'm doing it by myself. Well, all you got to do is stand on the beach with your camera. It's working so far. Pay the guy. Yeah. Drive out to the island with the spotlight. spotlight. Get as close as he can, shining his light directly on it. On it. Turn around, come back. Shining his light the whole way. <laughs> Drive out to the island. <laughs> in what? One of the what, those, what am I? You know, <laughs> one of those amphibian vehicles. Hydroplane. You can just roll right up on the beach next to you. <laughs> yeah, no. no. That'd be nice. Be nice. No, I need a. I need a. Um, I need a soldier with me. Yeah, I'll get better shots right. than that too. What I, what I say in that video, I really hate that video, what I say. I really like to mute what I say because it's all wrong. Why don't we do a voiceover? We can totally re-edit that. Mm. Surely can. I told him, go into a closet full of clothes. <laughs> yeah. Break it down. What the first time? It is what it is. I promise but you. I, didn't, I, I really didn't think it would turn out like that because it was, it, was, it was dead sad. I pulled up, chucked my shit out there. Five minutes. I was, I was literally on the beach for five minutes and then drove off. I didn't think it would look like that. <laughs> but no. No, so I wish I had have said some other things. But I was, it is what it is. That's what I said. But it doesn't have to be. You know how you <laughs> take your audio out and put whatever you record in? You just send me the files that you record from your phone. Just talking to your phone in a closet. That's all you got to do. Yeah. We'll put him in. All right. We'll put him in. No worries. But, um, yeah. So, James, you're back, are you? Do I hear James before? No? I thought he was yeah. there. I'm just... Uh... <laughs> He's out of breath. He's running. Trying to get everything set up. Yeah, I'm a little up, running back up to outside to, to rejoin. So Maybe you should stop eating all those cupcakes. <laughs> I eat cupcakes like you for breakfast. You eat cupcakes for breakfast? It's pretty bad for my teeth. I know. And if you look closely on that on that to each end of that island like if you look on the video you can see that there's maybe three islands in that little section there the ones on the ends they might not be 10 meters high the, the one on the far left and i think there's one on the far right as well they, they might not even be 10 meters high obviously the one in the center is quite high but the ones on the ends are tiny I was checking it out on Google Earth the other night just to try and see if I could work out how actually high they were, but it's, you didn't get anything like that, did you, Walt, in your investigations? What do you mean? The uh... the height of the island? Uh, actually, I didn't. I was trying to get to it. Like When I clicked on it, it took me to a website that apparently that's some kind of like preserve or some kind of park or something, so... 
Because a lot of times when you click on something like that, you can get that information, like how high it is and that kind of stuff. But that that one, it has a website when you click on it. Nah, that's it. I'm yeah. sure there's a way to find out if we if I had maybe Google it further and you know dug a little deeper. Hmm. I'm sure we can find it out. I can find out right now. Actually, hang on. Yeah, no. Nah. It's, it's probably another thing that we need to know exactly. Because if that were, if that was 120 feet high, that at its biggest point, I'd be surprised. Hmm. Rob, what was it you were asking for in terms of um, photo manipulation? You want me to draw lines on a photo that you've done? I can do that. Yeah, the, the one that's up on the screen right now, it'll be nice to get a red line through the where it's the, the mirror. In the middle of that image is, is the real edge. Right. Mm. I can do that. Because people just think that's a that's a whole that's the whole thing there, but it's mm, not. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's it's you're only seeing the top part of that, cause, mm. and it's mirroring. Okay, I'm gonna take just yeah. like you see, just like you see the big ships. You see the big ships, and they and when they get out to about that twenty mile mark, they start to um, mirror themselves. Yeah. I mean nineteen k, remember? Not miles, or is it k? Well, kilometers or miles? Do we say earlier? Oh, well, that that one there is miles right there. No, but you were you were Yeah, I'll have to start converting to both. I'm so American I forget. So I'll start with a couple of kilometers and <laughs> miles when I do 30, that's thirty Ks. That's thirty Ks yet. Okay. All right. So at about yeah, nineteen to twenty miles things start to distort regularly. Yeah. yeah maybe what you're a bit saying. short on that. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I reckon I reckon it'd be a, Yeah, probably twelve or thirteen miles they start to distort. I reckon. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, what was that? <laughs> that was uh, from a TV show called Archer. It's like a cartoon for adults. <laughs> Eat a dick, gravity. Nice. Um, so have we heard? Have you heard from Savage? I have not. Mm-mm. He's in the doghouse this week. We'll, we'll sick Rob on him. You talking about John? Mm. Yep. I love how you got that. You got your soundboard working. That is awesome. Yeah. Now, if you just get some decent sounds, <laughs> I can help with that. Oh, we need a new guy. Anyone know a new guy? You don't have the guts to be what you want to be. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bank. I always tell it to you, even when I lie. <laughs> Hello, Tony Montana. Mm. <clears throat> so how cold is it there at the moment, James? Minus 12 degrees Celsius. Why do you live there for? I used to live there because of the oil money. Now I live here because of... Uh, hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, the, the plan is to retire somewhere warm on a lake, man. I, uh, we have lakes. Ooh, I know I would love to retire out where you are, man. It is gorgeous. Either Australia or Somewhere like that in the U.S. I want I want something quiet, something nice. Fuck yeah, we don't one. have like Komodo dragons and things like that here. They'll eat you. Oh, the spiders, the box spiders. Oh, the and dead, right, right. Box cutter jellies and shacks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
hey, you just can't get swimming in the ocean here. Just bad, right? Let me ask you something, Rob. Is there is is it uh, a term out there for you guys to call it the broken coast? No. Oh. Okay. Why? Well, uh, one, of, one of the medical companies that I use for certain products um, was bought by AUS, which was like, an, uh, I can't remember the exact name, but an uh, Australian mining company, <laughs> believe it or not, sunk into a Canadian company, a whole whack of millions. And uh, I, well, the name was changed when they were bought. So because the new owners are Australian, I thought, I wonder, oh, I wonder if the Broken Coast is actually an Australian reference to the new owners. No, never heard that. Cool. Yep. So I heard something, though, about that. What was recently passed in Australia? Was there a law saying that um, marijuana could now be legalized for patients? Yeah, they're trying, I think. I think, um, yeah, there is medicinal stuff. I think it's hard to get it still. Mm. As in, it's hard for the doctor to get get you to that stage but yeah yeah that's that's uh, the biggest thing um and it'll take a while because we saw i saw it here in canada um there's such a bad stigma still on it that just maybe three years late like it was uh legally allowed for medical use in about i don't want to misquote but early 2013 i want to say and uh doctors now are just starting to um, be okay with talking to people and maybe, um, you know, prescribing it. Whereas even when, when I had cancer uh, three years or two years ago, almost when I went to my family doctor here, he's like, no way, dude, no way. I won't touch it. I can't do it. You know, uh, the minute I do that, there's going to be 12 kids lined up. I'm like, I'm not a kid. I got freaking cancer, man. But anyways, that's how it was. And, and now it's changed. His stance has changed. So, I, I take it in Australia, it'll probably be two years of unsurety, and then, you know, hopefully people will get some help. Mm. How's it going, Ed? Hey. Good evening, gents. Hey, Alan. How you doing, Walt? Hey, Alan. I'm pretty good. All right, good, good, good. I've literally just joined in, and you, you're chatting about cannabis by the sounds of things. Hmm. Yes, I was just telling Rob, because uh, I had heard when that they had uh, advanced the medical marijuana program in Australia. And I've been quite involved in the Canadian one um, since I was diagnosed with cancer. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Mm. Is that is that true, James? Is it they're, they're progressing in Australia? Oh, Rob, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sure is, yeah, yeah. I don't keep tabs on it too much, but um, I don't need it. But, um, yeah, they are moving ahead, yeah. I think it's going to be, I think it's gonna be a state-by-state state sort of thing, I think. Mm. Keeps, keeps a crumbling then, doesn't it? It'll be interesting to see what happens in the UK then. Yeah. yeah. What is the current status in the UK for medicinal... There, there is no distinction. Oh, I think I think the police may be subjective in their opinion, but I don't think in in the law there's any direct distinction <clears throat> between use for medicinal or recreational. So, is it? Can you legally get it through a doctor in the UK? No, no, not at all. Even even if you had a prescription from a UK doctor who's willing to write it, you wouldn't. There'd, there'd, be, there'd be nowhere to dispense it. Uh, and and be you know it, it, the supply itself in law wouldn't be legal. Oh wow! It's... Wow, that is that is tough. That would be very tough to handle because I am we... I'm, I'm, I speak from experience. If I didn't have access to it on my chemotherapy <clears throat> when I was doing eight hours a day on the bags, there's no way I wouldn't have made it without med- cannabis because I I couldn't I couldn't sleep i couldn't stand I, I was so dizzy i couldn't keep any food down if i didn't have it i don't know what would happen yeah i mean i'm, I'm not denying it's not used it's just i would it's there was a lot of stuff i i, I was i was um I had a morning off work this morning and my wife had some daytime tv on and there was there was a story on there about a, a young child with uh, severe epilepsy and the mother 
basically pleading, pleading for the country to do something to change the laws so at least this child can have access to medication that can, she can see other children are benefiting from. And and she's there describing all the time the, the medication they're giving to a child, which is, you know, in comparison, horrific. And that's medically speaking. Do, do you know what I mean? It was it's the the tide's changing and I think there's a seed change in the media over mm. here. But I think we're along you've America, I don't know what Canada's like, but America's got First Amendment rights, hasn't it, that overrules uh, drug prohibition law. But we don't have anything like that over here. So and we didn't either. We we follow England quite frankly a lot for a lot of our policies and government. Um, but uh, yeah, things are shifting, and it's funny that you talked about that story because um, a, a person that I know closely, who's a friend, had a daughter who had maybe a hundred a hundred and eighty to two hundred seizures, sometimes a day. And um, he fought and was on TV and went to the newspapers. He went everywhere um, and brought it right to the courts in Canada. And his case was actually a landmark case to get his little daughter um, some cannabis oil, the oil uh, pills. Yeah. She hasn't had a seizure in five years now, four years. So, and and that was one of the landmarks that leveraged uh, the Canadian market to say, okay, so hopefully... That lady gets somewhere with her uh, case, and that that can open up something. It's, it's very interesting. You say you see you've got legal cases there now. There's plenty of opportunity in the UK for the police to bring a prosecution against people like this. What you don't see is any prosecution. It's, it's similar to the euthanasia incidents. You don't see any prosecutions because they're settled discreetly outside as an agreement and. I would suggest the same is happening in the UK. I won't think for one minute there's not people suffering from all the multitudes that, of things that cannabis can treat that haven't been caught by the police. But to bring a prosecution would require them to then oppose the person's defence. And in doing so, you are then going to create some law. And I think that's what you're seeing in the UK is a a reluctance to create any precedents from any case law when we're talking about, because you just don't, you'll see people prosecuted for possession, you know, street possession, cannabis farms and the likes, but, you know, absolutely nothing in terms of medical treatment. Nobody gets prosecuted. It's well, What's worrisome here in the States, in the States that have had medical for some years now and have now gone to recreational use, it has basically killed the medical in that state, which is Washington. And now it's beginning to seem that that's what's going to happen in Oregon, because I was there a few months back trying to help my mother get some relief because she is just nothing, nothing works for her to, to live, not to be able to eat, not to be able to stay pain free without, you know, serious heavy duty uh, addictive drugs. Mm. So I went there to try to help her out and found out that that was a big concern there that with the recreational becoming the main focus and everybody just trying to have fun, the medical starts to take the back seat. And that's definitely unfortunate because there are people who really cannot live without it. I think there's, there's people that currently can't live without it and there's people that would vastly benefit from it as well. And the hypocrisy from my profession that ignores it and you know, from from the from the direct general practice of medical professions that ignore it, or well, not so much ignore it. Everybody knows it's there in the UK, but it's not spoken about. It's not uttered. It's whether it's said and intimated indirectly. I should suggest probably does happen. Not not as a matter of course, but I think tides are changing, and and, and the states. And it's great news to hear that other. Commonwealth driven countries are finding ways through it. I'm intrigued as to how Canada and Australia have got Germany. 
Well, Germany is a separate incident. But you guys, Canada and and, and Australia, the, the law is is based on our law, isn't it? It's it's pretty mm. much, a, a, you know, a, a transferred version of, isn't it? It's particularly mm. uh, laws that we we adopted from the American from, on behalf of the American corporations, which is most of the drug prohibitions. Because I mean, mm. I've got I've got old uh, British national formularies from the early 19th century that have a lot of the tinctures of cannabis in and stuff, you know, that I kept as novelties. They're upstairs in the loft somewhere. And mm. do, you know, do, do you know what I mean? I, I remember collecting in, in the past before, it, it, before the resurgence. But. It's really interesting. Isn't that treaty up um, now, the worldwide, uh, what is it, the 1977 drug law convention thing? Isn't that happening this year? Or have you heard that? No, no. Yeah, they were supposed to. Um, that's why. I, I mean, it was a big deal for Canada and the Canadian government to get their program going because I think it's next year that the the class one and the worldwide classification of drugs and what the status is um, gets renegotiated for the next whatever period of years. So it should be interesting. So, so Canada's a Canada. Sorry. Canada doesn't designate its own classifications of drugs. It's no, it does absolutely, and and uh, I can't remember what. Um, uh, it's very similar to the U.S., like Class One, Schedule A, or Schedule B, something like that. And um, marijuana was always, you know, lumped in like everybody else with cocaine and all that other stuff. And I think it was about ten years ago it got decriminalized. So, you know, you, that meant, you know, it stopped a lot of the petty crimes for, you know, quarters and half O's and, you know, like, don't waste your time here and there. And, and then it got um, decriminalized a little bit more. And then the medical came in. And, and now in 2017, we're, we're going to be announcing legislature to recreational legal, recreationally legalize it in all of Canada. So I know the U.S. has it in two or three or four places we're gonna have it legal everywhere be interesting that interesting i mean then then it'll follow because i mean you've already got it i think i think if you go on holiday in portugal and, and the likes where i've been it's it's fairly freely available in bars do you know what i mean it's not legal but it's illegality is is ignored right Certainly in, in big part, and then obviously you've got in Holland. It's 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 great fun. Well, there is a <laughs> a new thing happening here in the states. It's pretty much become easy to get CDB oil everywhere, even in like health food stores, vape stores. You can get it for a vape pen. You can get it to ingest in capsules in a health food store. So the CDB oil, which is helpful and can help with pain and inflammation and things like that. But as you probably know, just from pharmacology, when you start breaking plants down into parts, you lose a lot of the mm. synergy of the whole plant and what it all has, you know, what all is there available to you. The... I think, I think that's true. And I think that's the important, if you look at places like, I forget, it's a place in Colorado. Is it the Vale of, vale of Hope or something that, that actually still believes in that synergy but what they do is they grow a particular strain of plant that suits you they don't try and, and follow mod big farmers model which is to take a cannabis plant identify all the constituent components pick one individual cannabis cannabinoid what they do is they take a strain of plant and that strain is the one that suits you now that still mm -hmm. has just a different mixture of all the components so different right. levels of you know, so I think that's even more that approach is a lot more. Look, that's where we're going. I'm a pharmacist, mate, and I'm I'm mm. talking as if that's the way forward. Whether that's something that happens in my lifetime, but I think anybody who's realistic in what nature really gives us, and most drugs, my, my profession evolves from obtaining stuff from plants. That's what we did. You know, that's what our first year is full of along with lab work having fun like that do you know what i mean and and that's where 
medicine comes from and i think eventually we'll go back it's 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 how quick the journey i suppose because eventually once the once the tale of big pharma is unfolded there will be a mass rejection won't they so right well it's i guess it's part of that whole breaking it down into the constituents it's easier to patent an element of the plant than it is to try to patent the whole plant you know Again, back to the so, money. Totally. You can't patent a plant, can you? God's got the patent on exactly. a plant. Exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Monsanto might uh, argue <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah, fair point. Yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, fingers crossed, guys. But, but I mean, this is great news that we're seeing what we're seeing, isn't it? Oh, it's a great thing. Like I said, when I was in Oregon, it was a whole different world. Just when you, when you checked it out, they... Uh, the doctor that I went to uh, for, with my mom, that that's his whole push is to try to get it into the medical profession. Because even there, you, you talk to a regular MD about it and he's like, oh, no, we don't do that here. You know, you've got to call somebody else. So you have to go to a special doctor that handles it. But these are doctors. These aren't, you know, just fly by night guys. They're trying to push legislation. They're trying to make sure things stay in the medical community and doesn't turn into just a party on the weekend thing, which is what the recreational community of course wants, you know? Oh, I'm with you, Matt. I don't believe for one second that the vast majority of the medical profession don't know about it. Whether they're prepared to ever acknowledge and speak about it is because, because you're going to get reprimanded at best. Pressure. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you, you're going to get, if it was me, if I was to stand up and say, I wholeheartedly recommend the use of cannabis, I would be up for a, a formal reprimand and striking off. I can't say that within my profession because to do so would, 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 <laughs> would create problems. It's like a lawyer, it's not... a lawyer saying, you guys should just work this out yourself. Hey, settle out of court. I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> It's but, not allowed. It's not how you play the game, is it? It's not. You're, you're not. You're, really, you're not allowed to give an an opinion. You're yeah. allowed to speak on behalf of the profession that you've joined, and that's part yeah. of the the paradigm of control. Well, that's so there are lots of independent thinkers out there that think independently, but can't do so and stay within their profession. And and you yeah. see the consequences if people do. You know, it's not. You're gone, and therefore you can't act. And and I think. I was reading a lot of Dr. T's stuff at the start of it, you know, and it's very easy for people to be an indictment of, of us medics and claim we're, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I feel as guilty as the next person for the stuff that I, I do stick a label on and give out, you know, I don't agree with that. I, I give my honest opinion as best I can. And that gets me into trouble sometimes, you know, <laughs> but you know, right. it's, I have a close family member who recently started working in a pharmacy just as a clerk, and she's having a lot of trouble with passing that stuff across the counter to some old people that are already sickly and, you know, in poor health. They're knowing this is definitely not helping them in any way. And then not too long ago, they all got brand new T-shirts of pushing, you know, uh, the flu shot and free here and all this kind of stuff. So she's really having a rough time so with it. So there, there's a good example as, as as independent as you can be. So flu shots is something that UK pharmacies now do. It's not something that I do or do through, you know, I refuse to do it. It's not. If I'm giving a prescription to dispense it for the patient to take to the doctor to give them, I'll do so because I have to. Yeah. Do I as a separate commercial revenue stream go out there to people and say, I'll give you a flu shot? No. If they ask, do I do it? I'll say no, and I will then happily explain to them why I don't do it. Awesome. You know? that's, that's the, and that's the best That's, that's the great. best you can do within the system, as far as I can see. If there was more I could do and stay within the system, then I think I, I would, and, and I'm happy to to take comment on that. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and stuff. But it's the same with statins. If I've got statins, I'll advise people exactly what it's for, when it will benefit them, you know. You get a 70 year old bloke who's just been given a statin. I'll tell him that'll, be, that'll do you the world of good when you're 83. Might get you stiff bones next week, stiff muscles next week. But <laughs> do you know what I mean? And that's the, that's the best you can do within the confines of 
not stepping out of the system. And then if I'm out of the system, who's going to inform them as well as I do? That's the way I see it. And That's it. Break them down from within. <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe no, I'm, being not silly. That much. I, I'm being silly, man. I know what you can do. Maybe it's more just justifying my cowardice, maybe, but you know, you know, it's um, that's kind of how I see it. The, the, you know, I, I can't wait for Dr. T to get on here. I want to have a good chat with her about her absolutely dissertation, and I look forward to that. So, anyway, I've rambled, I digress. I'm sorry. Mm. Well, I appreciate your bravery for even speaking out to that level here on our show. Thank you, man. Absolutely. Well, uh, Hopefully there was nothing too litigious there. <laughs> I was fairly careful. <laughs> we'll find out. I'll wait for the we'll post. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this, Adam, in, in terms of the system. Here's, yeah. it, it, this is difficult to say, but it's my real life, so it's fine. So they want to put me on weekly injections into my groin area. They also want to put me on this stuff called gabapentol. Um, Sorry, gabapent, gabapentin, is that for the yeah, pen, yeah? Yeah, that's okay, what they okay. want to put me on. And I've talked to many, many people and friends and, and this lady that's been on it for 14 years and, and she says, no, you become a zombie, I don't like it. And Anyway, so... Okay, so, so gabapentin initially started out as an anti-epileptic drug. Okay, and what they found was it wasn't... And this is how a lot of drugs, this is how Champix, as you'll hear, the anti-smoking drug started as an antidepressant and nobody got happier. They just stopped smoking, they realised. So they marketed it as an anti-smoking drug. But, but gabapentin is another, another example in that, that, that what they marketed was an anti-epileptic drug. It was out there and they realised that although people weren't really reducing the seizure rate by any significant amount to warrant it as a drug for treatment of seizures, lots of people that also had pain meds were reporting massive reductions in their pain medication. So that's how your wonder drug gabapentin. So, you know, make your own medical advice. Is that the way you want to, uh, the, the way anti-epileptics work is they dumb down the central nervous system. So they slow everything down. They stop neurons being overexcited and going into seizure. Right. So is that the way you want to control your pain? Uh, if you've got alternatives, no. But here's I would the problem. No. Here, here's my dilemma, and this is what I'm what I wanted to get at in terms of systems and processes, and you know. Yes, so, no. because I'm compl- I'm I'm on a program because I'm unable to work, I have to. They're they're going to force me to take those things. I don't get an option. If I don't, they cut me off. That's that's the situation I face here with my laws and the way it is. So if you're on disability or sick benefit, well, everything that they suggest to me, whether it's the needles, whether it's this, whether it's that, I have to legally take it. I can refuse it, but then they can they will cut me oh, off. I've, right. So and that's the problem. All the ways. Big problem. Because I know what works for me. Like I, I have what works. And it goes right. specifically back to what you were saying. The, um, the specific terpenes and like um, different strain characteristics. Like for me, I have a strain in the morning. SLH, Super Lemon Haze, it actually reduces the swelling and inflammation and gives me, gives me energy, you know, to do two, two hours worth of work. It took me 10, 15 strains to find it. But I've, I also have a nighttime one that helps with the, the pain in my groin. So I don't want their drugs. I want what works for me. Um, um, right. Yeah, yeah. What do you, what what do you, think, what do you think about that? I think, I think, I think, I think that's a kind of benefit cheat. Benefit cheat. You, you pretend you're taking, pretend them, you're and taking them and then... Sorry, guys. Sorry, I've got guys. Terrible, terrible feedback. feedback. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Josh, uh, Josh is presenting. Presenting. Yeah. Yeah. Better. Better. Mm-hmm. All right. That should fix it. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I think I think that's kind of one of those situations, isn't it, where the the system. It's going to make you poorly, uh, sicker than you, you actually are. You know. I don't want to play the games, though. Like I'm working with a no. charity agency, and this is what they said, which is great. And I've also thought about it. 
get the prescriptions, go to the doctor, you know, um, get them, fill them out, put, it, put them away. After 30 days, say they're not working. Um, for the injections, she's like, why don't you just say, I don't have a vehicle anymore, and the, the injections are 40 minutes away in the town that I can't get you. Do you have some in town? And then they'll say no. Well, can we look at an alternative method? Like, there's ways around it, but why should I have to cheat and, and fight that way? It's just not fair. No, I'm with you, bro. But I think reality is that that you either step out of the system or you you fuddle its bullshit, don't you, in a way? You know, it's... I wouldn't even have to worry about it if I could afford the right meds. Right? I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily say them. even. I'd pretend I was taking them if it was me. Can't recommend that, but I'd pick the prescription up every month. I, I mean, I'll give you a good example. There's a lot of issues in the UK because all medicines are free. Yeah, and um, there's a lot Same. of issues around medicine wastage. Yeah. And I, I know lots of old people that, you know, when, when they pass away and you go to the house and um, or, or, or you just go and, and you see them and they'll talk to the pharmacist differently than they will to the doctor. And I'm there and there's, a, there's this lady and she had a bag and they buy phosphonates for these for old people for, for um, brittle bones to build up their bones and stuff. And she read the leaflet and never liked it. And she had five and a half years worth of medication there. But what are they there for? She says, well, if the doctor gets upset if I don't order them. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So she just thought, I saw this, because I'll just, I'll just thought, order them every month like he wants, and then, then he won't bother me. Well, that's what they I mean, said, that's... too, because drugs are free here, too. I mean, it's all covered. <coughs> it's all covered. They like, get paid. But they get paid. It is free. It is free. You, know, you couldn't recommend that ever, but, you know, it's a true tale. You know, she died an old lady. She didn't. Either way, it's just another <laughs> control piece, right? You know, they want everybody yeah, yeah, but... in their place and controlled and under the plan. <laughs> well, I think the point is it's it's fight where you can fight and win a fight. There's no point having a fight. Yeah, I got a parking ticket. I tried to fight it for ages and ages. You know what I mean? And unless I'm prepared to actually go to court and risk them clamping my car and trying to get it back, there's certain fights that aren't worth fighting. You can't win and you expede your energies. They're like that. You know, if you put your we energies We have a guy in. here who can tell you a lot about how to fight that, that fight. Josh? Is it that? Is it that? Uh-oh, he, Uh-oh. May, he may not be handy. I don't want to talk. Handy. No, no, you got to talk. You got to talk. I want to make sure that my shit's not going to make everybody echo and get feedback and everything. That's true. That's, that's you're true. Having that's, you're having trouble. Well, I tried to unmute earlier, and then I was immediately yeah. muted. So yeah, I yeah, I was it, still started, yeah it started by feedback as it is now. As it is now. It's echoing. Yeah, it's, it's echoing. I don't know. There's, I haven't changed anything. There's it's no reason Google. it should be. It's Google. Oh, Google. Oh, Google. Oh, fucking Google. We've been oh, saying too many, many of those, many of those phrases. phrases. Something. Well, I'm going to have to go eat soon anyway, so. Well, I was about to say, well, I, I was about to say, I have to ring off too, too, and I hate to go to the echo. Me as well. Me as well. Because I, have to, cause I start talking like, because I start talking, I can't make sense. You're heading out, out too, James? I'll mute you guys. I'll, you guys say your goodbyes. I'll run the outro. <laughs> keep, keep the room open, and we'll keep talking after I go okay. offline. After we go okay. off live, yeah, I'll be back live. Uh, yeah, I'll be back I live uh, later. I mean, we can come for the come show. For the okay, show. okay. We all saw an ad. I went. Uh, I went. Well, I have to go. It's my birthday weekend, and plan oh, happy birthday, eat. dude. Thank you. How old? I heard early, like super age. I didn't believe it. Yeah, I'll be 50 tomorrow. That's all right. I heard a 74 and I thought, Jesus, he looks good <laughs> for 74. Well, oh, yeah. There must be some tips. <laughs> yeah. Just live right, I guess. Stay flat. Mm-hmm.
<laughs> no, you look you look terrible for fifty, mate. But yeah, seventy four, you look off. fine. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. That was a good one. Good one. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't. Yeah, we're that. gonna have. That was awesome. We're gonna have. Uh, I'll be. I'm gonna be live streaming some karaoke just for you guys later. <laughs> I look forward to that. I look forward to. It. I don't know. I'm I'm still free if anybody's if if everybody's hanging around. But. And I may pop back on if I can um, after festivities. Uh, but guys, I appreciate it. Uh, I have I have some other questions for you, Adam. But I'll DM you. Sorry, Walt. No, go ahead. I just did. and then uh, Josh is going to play a little uh, kind of a little promo for some upcoming have no sphere things that we're going to be doing. Uh oh! It looks like we're all getting kicked off, whether we wanted to leave or not. My goodness. Well, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> and on that note, my goodness. <coughs> All right. Well, we appreciate you guys trying I'm to get back. back in again. Yeah. That's it. We're leaving whether we want to or not. Well, Rob left and it kicked me out as well. I don't it know kicked what everyone. Yeah, it kicked everyone <laughs> except me. And, and I think Josh was still here. But, well, anyway, happy birthday, bro. And have a good thank, you, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. I'll yes. take care. I'll take care. I'll take care. All right. See you all. Happy birthday. All right. Thanks, man. All right, thanks, man. All right, then, gents. I'm just going to play this out. We'll get the hell out of here. I'll leave the room open. We'll still chit chat. I'm just going to have to go get a bite to eat first. But uh, yeah, I'll just leave the room open. I'm just going to go offline. No worries, Josh. No worries, Josh. What we getting? We just been busy, not doing shows. We've been busy playing around on the computer. Aww. So we'll get it eventually. <laughs>